the wide receivers coaches. Can I, I just mean, ask you what the lottery numbers are, though? Me? Oh, because yeah. I well, because Juan Castillo was going to be gone. Yeah, of course, man. Of course. Listen, you didn't need to read tea leaves to figure that one out. All right, that well, one. no, the the insane part of that is. I was like, I was arguing against you. I said, no way. I mean, <laughs> for as many excuses that um, Dable has, Rubisky, or not Rubisky, which is another shocker too. Yeah. Um, Castillo could have had. He could have had just as many excuses. Mm-hmm. And, sure. And same and with you wide were, receivers. Coach. And you were talking to me. You were said, I was like, the wide receivers have an effect on the run game. And you're like, no, they don't. Mm-hmm. Rubisky's gone. If you wouldn't mind hitting that Le'Veon bell, appreciate it. <laughs> Don't do that, it won't show up. <laughs> when it comes to Allen, right, this offseason is going to be very different because they still retain David Culley. Now, we got a tweet. Um, I thought it was a great tweet um, that was mentioned out because uh, Dean uh, Kingdon from a uh, Bill or uh, TC Astro Bills. Yeah, yes. phenomenal work. Love like him. he's he's great with draft tech. He's super great. Um, and there were some there were some things about some tweets that he sent out this week that I want to talk about. But we got a tweet in response to something, and one of them was um, uh, David Colley should get moved to the wide receiver coach because. He hasn't been a quarterback's coach since 1988. That was the last time he was a quarterback's coach. It was in college in 1988. Since then, he's been primarily a wide receiver's coach or an offensive assistant. So, I mean, sure, I, he's been a quarterback's coach before. I was six when that happened. I, some of our subscribers weren't even born. But the fact is, he's done the job before, okay? However, somebody had mentioned, and I'll find the tweet and we'll put it up on the screen. Um, somebody had mentioned, let's move into wide receivers coach. And there was a phenomenal response um, that was like, why would you ever take the wide receivers coach that had 21 games as a wide receivers coach for the Chiefs when none of them caught a touchdown pass? Why would you want that wide receivers coach? Oh and I was God. like, oh my God, that's right. That was Cully. Cully was the wide receivers coach who we're all screaming should get fired because none of his wide receivers caught a touchdown for almost a season and a half. 21 consecutive games they went without a touchdown reception. 21. That's insane. Will Josh Allen, will Josh Allen's development be hurt by McDermott hiring who he's familiar with? Okay. Instead of hiring who's qualified. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, if McDermott was really about hiring who was qualified and not who he liked, he would have kept Aaron Cromer. Right? Am I wrong here? No. Do you, do you realize that I spent an hour angry that the Bills fired Aaron Cromer just a couple days ago? I, I spent an angry hour, like, hate Googling 20, everything I could find. When was he fired? 2016? Uh, he was fired when McDermott got hired, yeah. So you were... Wow. I was hate Googling so much about Aaron Cromer <laughs> because I was pissed. You know, they let go Aaron Cromer and brought on Juan Castillo, and the offensive line took an immediate downturn, right? Mm-hmm. Immediate. And Cromer wasn't a bad offensive coordinator for the Bears. The no. problem with Cromer was something that happened off the field, right? He ended up getting suspended by the Bills for six games. That was the Bills investigation, not the NFL investigation. Right? Mm-hmm. The Bills suspended him for six games post their investigation. But I understand them doing that. Yeah. You know, step up to the plate. If you suspend him, the NFL can't. Right? It saves it, it saves his face. Because mm-hmm. he's like, listen, the NFL never suspended me. The Bills did their own investigation. They suspended me for it. The NFL never suspended me for this incident. Yep. All charges were dropped. So I think that's another important factor here is that all charges were dropped. Well, and I, Goodell, if he ever t- tries to intervene, he'll always usurp whatever the Supreme Court or whatever right. court does. You know right, I mean? right. There's, there could be many, many players that were found not guilty of anything, mm-hmm. and, and Goodell still, you disrespected the shield, you hurt the shield. And yeah. whatever their, whatever their you know, personal conduct policy is in the NFL, I mean, all right, you, were, you were accused of this and you were taken to court, 
that's a minimum of two games. Yeah, you're clearly no. yeah you you clearly violated some sort of conduct. We're gonna suspend you. Cromer was suspended by the Bills. McDermott, I'm sure that's one of the reasons that McDermott let him go, because the offensive line production was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. It was the best offensive line so under he him that they had in a decade. So what you're saying, if I'm getting this correct, you're saying that he felt his offensive staff can coach him up. Oh my God. No, I mean, Castillo had been in the league for a long time. Yes, he and, But he, that, that's the thing. He'd worked with McDermott. He had varying for a really roles, long though. Time. Like, he went mm-hmm. from a. He was a defensive coordinator. Yeah, wasn't he? he was a DC. Like, yeah. okay. When when McDermott ended up leaving Philly, he became the defensive coordinator there. And yeah. then you want to hire him as your run game coordinator. Well, how do you think that conversation went? McDermott says, hey, by the way, I'm leaving. I'm going to take this other job. Um, by the way, Juan Castillo would be really good at this. Who knows? It could have been a right? discussion. They could have, you know what I mean? The, the reed tree tends to stick together a lot. I mean, I mean, I was digging into the archives. We're talking about Leslie Frazier. He was with McDermott and Reed in Philly. Yeah. Like on opposite sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. So it was <clears throat> it was pretty interesting to see that. I think he was a defensive backs coach for Reed. Um, and then he floated around. But I mean, it, it's a good old boys club, man. It is very much so. I think when he when McDermott was first assembling his staff. The process that he keeps talking about is trying to find the right people, not only on the field but off. Uh-huh. So he started with guys that he knew. Uh-huh. Right, I know Castillo. You know, the, I know right. Cully. Right. I know uh, Frazier. Uh-huh. I know all these guys. And uh, okay, the only guy they didn't know was Dennison. They didn't know him from a hole in the ground. No, they didn't. They they no said, connection to, to right, listen, This isn't working. But it was. It was looking through it. <clears throat> we could we could talk about the hits and misses of. The guys that he's hired, that he's known. You talk about KB. You talk about Star. You talk about yep. even. You could even put Bean in that conversation. Sure. Jury's yeah. still out. Mm-hmm. We don't know how this draft's going to be and everything. But all the guys that he tries to get are the guys that he's familiar with. He's like a, he's, he's like, like just, the footballs are. Like everybody talks about. Oh, you need to get a, a head of football operations in. You know, you need a footballs are. Remember the footballs are was a big thing like a decade ago. That annoys me. Yeah, that annoys but me that's what that. that's. But look at it objectively. That's the role that McDermott has filled is he's filled the role of football czar because the Pagulas have done what he's wanted. What he's wanted, he's got. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Pagulas are taking an approach that McDermott's not taking, where the Pagulas are like, listen, we're, we're not football people. Yeah. Or he may, he may not be, I don't know. He's definitely not Jerry Jones. No. So no. he's like, okay, you're a football guy. I'm going to trust you to do what you need to do. So you take control, you take the reins. And he said, well, I need being up here too. Yep. All right. Well, how you're being. Well, yeah, because um, he's got no allegiance to Whaley. You know? No, none. Pagula? No, none. I, um, I really do believe that the Pagulas just want to win. And they're willing to do and let go who they have to let go to win. Mm-hmm. You know, they've done it with the Sabres, they, right? They they're don't, doing it with the Bills. Yeah, don't you, don't, you don't get to that point <laughs> without knowing what to do. You know, listen, I'm going to give you the reins on this, but if it fails, it's all on you. Right. I'm not. I'm not controlling this. You're not going to blame me for this. It's all in, in the media. You know, the offensive line coach is often a. They're just a position coach, but there's so much more than that. Absolutely. You know, they're responsible for what nine guys on your roster, right? You're looking at the line, and then you're looking at the reserve guys. You're looking at nine guys on your roster because they they don't manage the the line on special teams. That special teams coordinator that deals with that. Uh-huh. Right? So, uh-huh. so they're managing nine guys in the roster, which doesn't sound like a lot. When you talk about nine out of uh, fifty-two, mm-hmm. I mean that's enough, right? To yeah. not be a coordinator, that's enough. Yeah. Plus, if you're thinking about it in this respect, if the line's supposed to control everything, yeah. If that's the most important position, I mean, positions besides, besides, besides yeah, the, quarterback. the quarterback. I mean, realistically speaking, if your line is bad, everything else is going to fall apart. Sure. So you're talking about a guy who's ahead of that. So he has to be a pretty informative and get guys, you know, going where he has to go. Not so much the uh, adjustments. You know, we talk about adjustments with Dable. And yeah. Man. The the offensive line coach has to diagnose stuff quick, and he has to see it mm-hmm. within the, and he's got to be on the field for it. Yep. How can you diagnose what's going on in the line if you're up in the booth? You can't right. do it. Yep. So you got to try to see what's going on. You got to communicate with your lineman to say, all right, who's done it? What are they doing? What's going on? Talk to me. 
and you know we got to try to make these adjustments. Those guys are the classic whiteboard guys, man. They're like, oh, if he comes in, he yeah, does. absolutely. And that's what got me with Cromer was that Cromer was really good at it. Now, mind you, the Bills are running zone blocking schemes, right? So they're running zone blocking, and the Bills right now they they abandoned that mm-hmm. when they they abandoned that this year. They weren't really running zone blocking schemes, and Cromer had been primarily running zone blocking schemes. So. But that's what gets me is that they brought in Dennison, who also ran a zone blocking scheme. We don't really so know what Dennison what I, ran because I, he ran an outside zone. So, well, the, he was under he, Kubiak, and then he was under Kubiak and Manning. But so. they said <laughs> that he was running an outside zone blocking scheme. Okay, right. So that's what they had said. It wasn't the, the exact same scheme that Cromer was coaching. It was a little bit different. But zone blocking, zone blocking, inside outside. I don't really in, zone blocking, zone blocking. So they were running the same type of scheme and they still fired Cromer because McDermott I don't think wanted we don't know how that conversation they didn't want any question marks there well yeah you don't know that you know I think he had he whitewashed the whole staff of course you know how that went you think Cromer's gonna be the one dude he holds on to the one dude with the battery charge you're really telling me that that McDermott's gonna hold on to the one dude I got suspended depending on how that conversation went and I think he wanted to bring in who he was familiar with. I don't think he was familiar right. with Cromer. Right. What I'm saying is... I don't think is, he knew him. Or that conversation could have been like, listen, uh, he, may have gave, he may have gave Cromer a, a, you know, do you want to be the OC? No. I can't imagine why he turned that down. He probably didn't. He probably thought he would get other offers for certain things. But getting back to that point, do you think Cromer being an OC helped him to be an O-line coach? Absolutely. You think the overall scope, knowing the overall scope of what the offense is trying to accomplish, and hundred percent. All right. Yeah, and Juan Castillo, never an offensive coordinator. Where's he at now? Yep, he's with the Rams. Ask Todd Gurley how Aaron Cromer's doing. I'm sure he'll have plenty of nice things to say about him. It's just so interesting to me that you relieve the offensive line coach when Dable wants to run the football. That's what he. You look at his history. He wants to run the football, yet you get rid of the offensive line coach. Right? Think of how different this team would have been had Cromer stayed. Dennison would probably still be the offensive coordinator. Honestly, he probably would be. Glenn might still be here, though. That might be. That might so you be mean more. we wouldn't have Edmonds? Because we no, got. We wouldn't have Edmonds. So you're telling me I have to trade Aaron Cromer for Tremaine Edmonds? Is that is that where we are? You, I think it, it's a fair point. It's a very fair point. I don't know, but would I trade a 32-year-old? No, 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 because they traded Glenn. For the initial pick that went down to 16 or something. Where was the, where was the first pick? Where was Bengals picking? 16? 15? Uh, maybe, yeah. They used that pick to get Allen. So you're going to trade Cromer for Allen? Bill still would have moved up. <laughs> I don't know if they would have got him. We might, we might have Josh Rosen instead of Josh Allen. Imagine that train wreck. Oh, you, you drafted Josh Rosen? Yeah. What do you got? First pick in the draft. I I get the counter <laughs> argument. I do. Yeah, I get the counter argument. Because I, maybe he maybe that was one of those things. Like I I want to keep I want to keep Glenn. I want to move Dawkins down to the guard. Mm-hmm. And Dawkins, they're like, Dawkins no, would not be a tackle if Aaron Cromer was. Exactly. He would probably. Well, I, we drafted him for tackle. Well, he's not a tackle. I know this position. Yeah. He's not a tackle. Well, that's what we drafted him. Okay. See ya. You never know how that conversation... It would have been so interesting to be a fly on the wall with half of these conversations that go on with these guys just to try to confirm or deny what the heck we're thinking. Well, I mean, let's be realistic. When you're building a staff, right, and this is something that the Bills are running into probably with Dable this year, and even Dennison last year. Dennison didn't get to hire his own staff. Dennison was last man in. So Dennison didn't bring in his own guys. Yeah, why does he, he take brought in quality years? control guys, you know. But my point remains is that if McDermott walks into a room and says, hey, hey guys, this is what we're going to do, you're telling me Juan Castillo is going to tell him no? You're telling me Rick Dennison, Brian Dable is going to tell him no? I think different? Absolutely not. You bring in Eric Cromer, you put him in a room, and Dave, McDermott walks in and says, hey, guys, Dawkins, I want to try him out at tackle. Cromer would go, hmm, okay. You sure about that? You been drinking this morning, Sean? You look a little red in the face. <laughs> He's like that. He's going, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I find it very hard to believe that even if McDermott wanted to keep Cromer, he would have because it would have been, it wouldn't have been a good precedent to set. 
by, oh, I'm going to keep this one guy who is suspended, um, and but everybody else has to go. Well, yeah, I, I understand that. And I understand trying to build the culture. culture. Yeah. You know, you want to talk about this guy. You want to, well, wow, Coach Coach really has uh, the, the bar set high for us, but he has a coach on his staff that's suspended. Like, what, we're not allowed to get suspended, but the coaching right. staff can get suspended? Right. That's ridiculous. And then by doing that, he says, listen, I'm holding everybody accountable. Mm -hmm. I'm not just holding my staff. I'm not just holding my players. Everybody in the building is going to be held accountable and held to a certain standard to change culture here. Mm -hmm. um, and this is this is going way beyond X's and O's. Mm -hmm. Big time. This is, uh, you know what I mean? Like, as, as a teacher, sometimes I, I have I have students that I get along with more than other students that I've had because I've had students a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. So, students that see that I have a relationship with this student, if I yell at that one, it controls yeah. the whole room. Sure. So them by not hiring Cromer set the precedent where hey, this guy's really good, and he got rid of him because he couldn't stay in line. Right. Because he couldn't keep his head above water. Or keep his head clean or whatever. Like I that. mean, he certainly So we got to keep our stuff together. Because <clears throat> it doesn't matter how talented we are, he's going to get rid of us if we don't do what we're supposed to do. I do want to just point out, because that's an excellent point. You're right. To build the culture, you, you have to set an expectation. Mm -hmm. And by setting an expectation, sometimes you, you know, you have to look at it and say, okay, winning isn't, isn't that important. It's about building, you know, it's like building the foundation. We have to make sure that this is built right. Thank you.